Thursday. Hello, you guys. Leslie Gay hey. from Black Hi, Tree Leslie. TV. Hi, Leslie. Hi. So I have a couple of questions. My first one is for you, Colin. So 25 years ago, you played the character named Click in Drinking Crude. Yeah. Wow. What would you tell yourself now, you know, knowing that like you were in a film called Drinking Crew to now you're Batman, you're a super villain. What advice do you have for your young person? Oh my God, Leslie, none, because I, I, I wouldn't have listened. I wouldn't have listened. I would have said, move, move along, old man. You're in my way. I, I want to get to oh. the bar. You're in my way. <laughs> I truly, I truly wouldn't have listened. I, I'm not, you know, the whole advice thing is kind of, it's kind of lost on me. I don't know. I wouldn't know what to say to myself. Wow. You know, you were a hard hit back then, so you just own it. Yeah, no, I just say keep going. I mean, we've all got to learn from our own mistakes as much as we try to learn from the mistakes of others, you know? Yeah, that's right. And for you. Who's the mustache with the broken nose? I got into it with at the Iceberg Lounge. What do you think? Kinsey Moon Knights with the Penguin. All right, Mom, let's just a cop. Mr. John Turturro. So you've oh. been in, I don't know if it's seven or eight Spike Lee films. Um, yeah. How do you think being in so many Spike, film, Spike Lee films helped you with your character development over the years? Oh, well, Spike's a dear friend of mine. You know, we, we, we're the same age. <laughs> you know, we, we grew up uh, in very similar uh, situations, actually different situations. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just a that's a, a lovely thing to be able to have a long friendship with someone and to uh, share a lot of common interests. And we've been through a lot of things together, lots of controversy, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, different things. Uh, and I've always uh, really valued and sort of treasured my my friendship with him, which continues to this day. You know, I, someone I really care about and I feel, you know, uh, brotherly towards in a in, in, in a real way so uh, he obviously gave a lot of people opportunities and I was one of them and so uh, but a lot of the people that I worked with on do the right thing they're still my friends to today you know so uh, uh, it was a great group of people to, that, and uh, so he, I, I'm very appreciative of that relationship I really am awesome. so just to add on to that if Spike Lee were to take on the superhero genre, what do you think his take might be? <laughs> well, it'd be they'd be on a dolly. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> they'd be floating through the air. I think he'd be great. I think he'd be great, man. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a, a natural filmmaker, and he's he's shown that in all different genres. So, uh, and it'd be funny too, because uh, you know he he's got a great sense of humor also. So, which is underrated, I think. So back to you, Mr. Penguin. <laughs> How's it going? So knowing that you've played this iconic character and you've had your own spin on it, what is something that you would say that made you stand out in this role from, you know, uh, the Danny DeVito Penguin? And because this be was to me more of a dark, gritty kind of a film. It's got to be the makeup what made me stand out you know I can't really claim ownership for, <laughs> I can't really claim ownership for what distinguishes me from previous penguins I have to give it to my you know I know I know I inhabited it and I know that you know I was kind of pulling the strings but the puppet the the marionette that was given to me to operate was so extraordinary you know you can always miss but I felt like I was close to not being able to miss as I'll ever get you know um 
So just that. I know that, that Matt was really concerned with this version, as John has spoken about before, about going back to the source material where the Batman is, you know, it's a detective film and it's, it's dark. It's a noirish world that's filled with shadows and criminality. It's very laconic. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot said, but the Batman doesn't say too much, but everything he says has purpose and meaning. And he's trying to unravel these crimes that are taking place in Gotham. And Gotham is a very, very sick place. And the sickness is, is you know, detectable, discernible from the very, very opening, the opening frame in the film where we see that eerie perspective point of view and we don't know who's, whose view we're seeing and we hear this breath and, you know, so Matt wanted it all to be very grounded. He wanted it to be recognisable and he wanted it to deal with some of the sicknesses that we deal with in our common societies in, in all the major cities across the world, whether it's social or political, you know, or social and political, I should say. It was definitely, a, a, to me, a more of a darker, greedy uh, version yeah. of the town. This version, you know, the previous version, the father was always like this bystander that got killed. And so with this twist on, you know, Bruce Wayne's father being, you know, possibly, you know, somebody who was, uh, I don't want to say too much, but the foundation of how Gotham started, you know, becoming this, how, how it was with you, John, how do you feel like your character in this particular film the grit of it, like, like well, how there, you... there's always compromise, you know, when people do things, you know, it's like someone becomes the mayor of, of a city and they always say, I'm going to do all these things and then they have to compromise. And uh, so there is compromise. And then there are people who take advantage of the compromise who are predators and say, you know what, there's an opportunity for me to make a lot of money or to have this person in, in, in my debt if I can help them do, do something. So nothing is completely uh, uh, black or white. You know, we really live in the gray area. That's, that's what most of life really is. And to get anything done, some, there is a lot of compromise uh, that's, in, uh, that's necessary, actually. Uh, so I, I like that when, when a film explores that, the, the nuance and, and what you have to give up in order to get something. Even Bruce Wayne, he's, he's hurting, but does he live his whole life just with this anger and this vengeance, you know, or does he grow and, 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 and is he awakened to say, hey, there's got to be a way that I can balance that, you know, and, and help society. So, you know, as you grow, as you have more life experience, you, you see what that means. You know, when you're 20 years old, you're much more of a purist when you're 25, you know. And I think people who hold on to their idealism, even to the end of their lives, if, they, if you've lived a long life, they're really rare. And it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, you, know, you have to protect that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys both so much for your time. This was thank a you. really, really great movie. Can't wait to see what everyone else thinks about it because I love right, it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you very much. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Okay.